Hello, my name is Richard Vince and I'm here to tell you a little bit about um, the beginners class that we have for, we're not going to say an age, for seasoned individuals, people who are, are perhaps um, not operating at the speed and strength and power that they once did, but would like to fight that enemy of inactivity and um, get themselves into a nice, a nice place, maybe a little healthier, a little fitter, a little bit stronger, and maybe have a great interest. All right, so the idea of this video is to help you um, to feel comfortable when you've come to that first class. <clears throat> so um, we will have some information about you when you come because you would have done all the online uh, registration. Uh, the instructor will bow to you and shake your hand. You know, we can all manage that, can't we? It's a nice, simple thing. Um, and we, want, we do this because we want you to feel um, like you're part of everything, like you're, you're becoming part of a team. Um, one of the, our primary things is respect and acknowledgement. So, you know, we will um, bow to you, shake your hand, uh, and then you'll uh, come onto the area and begin your training. Now, as I said, the idea of this video is to help you to be comfortable, help you to feel relaxed. Um, I can still remember my first ever um, karate class. I was so nervous because I just didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I didn't. I had no idea what the instructor was going to be asking me to do in that session, and I, I was concerned that I might not be able to do it. So, if I, if we show you what we're likely to do in the first session, um, I can't promise this will be exactly the first uh, session that you come to, but it will be something very similar, and it will certainly be this format. Yeah, good. All right. So again, once you're lined up on the mat and you're this is, this is our area. Although I'm filming this in a different direction to the way we usually stand, we would normally stand facing that way where the mirrors are, um, so you can um, you can see what you're doing and, and get yeah, good um, use your reflection as a guide to, to how you're progressing. First thing we do is bow again, not bow. Huh? So just a small bow, feet together, hands by sides, just bow this way and three things are bow means. I respect you, I promise I won't hurt you, and I'll always do my best. All right, so if you're bowing, that, that's what the instructor is saying when, he, when he's bowing to you, she's bowing to you, whether it's male or female, and if you can say, if you can be thinking and saying in your mind the same thing, I'll do my best, I respect you, and I promise to do you no harm. Right, and, and I think that's a really powerful thing, really uh, a strong message. You know, we don't want to do anyone harm. We only want to do good. We will always treat you with respect and we will do our best. You know, and if you can return those three things back to us, it'd be fantastic. Good, so after we've bowed, um, we'll get into a warm up. Now the idea of the warm up is to help your body to be a little warmer uh, and then become a little bit more flexible. We'll get your body in moving a little bit, get your joints loosened off and going through some range of movement. Um, and it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing with a warm up. You, know, you think, well, and my body will loosen up more when it's warm, but I don't want to do anything too um, strenuous until it's stretched a little bit in case I pull or tear something. Right, so we are used to this. We're used to doing things gradually to get people warm very steadily and get people stretched and, and going through some, um, some exercises that help your muscles to relax a little bit. Good, all right, so um, I'm not going to be teaching the, um, the, the uh, seasoned individuals classes. Uh, Master Ward is going to be doing that. He's, um, he's 50, uh, so he's, he's coming up towards 60. He's, he's no youngster. Um, and he understands how to, um, how to put this together for, for people who are um, our age. Uh, I'm 60 plus myself. All right, so. Having bad, we'll just do something similar to this. I can't promise it will be exactly the same as this, but it'll be this level of um, strenuousness, if that's a word, or uh, it'll be this level of activity. All right. So I like to step from side to side, just nice and gently. I keep your knees soft, soft knees, gently bent knees. Yeah? And what this exercise does, it just um, allows you to step out, and then when you pull this leg across, you get to exercise the outside of your leg and the inside of your leg. So the outside of your leg is you step out and the inside of your leg is you pull together. 
Right, so you're just gently warming up your abductors and your adductors. And it doesn't need to be a huge movement. It's just as I said, just some activity. Getting your blood flowing a little bit. Um, getting your body warm. So that it that can then respond. And we can help to um, get it to become a little bit more flexible and move easily. Good. Right now we usually do the same thing going forwards and backwards. So I'm leading off with my right leg in both directions. So I lead right and I lead right going backwards. So right leg, left leg catches up, right leg, left leg catches up. Yeah, there are no tests for these warm up exercises. You know, no one's going to say you're doing that wrong. You know, it's, uh, it's about moving around, feeling comfortable and getting your body warm. Good, right now I'm going to lead off with the other leg. So, so both legs get a chance to initiate and both get a chance to push off. And if, you, if I turn sideways, you can see that as I push with that leg and I push back, push forward, push back. Right now, it's not a crazy heavy duty push, is it? It's just nice and easy. Right, so I'm, I'm just activating those leg muscles so that they, they engage, they're, they're being used. Right, I'm just be light on the toes like this. Right, so I wouldn't call this jogging, just lifting one foot and then the other. All right, then we do some opposite elbow to knee. So just come across here. And this activates our core a little bit, you know, our central uh, trunk here, because it gets our arms involved. And we're gently twisting. Nothing too radical or crazy. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's always good to incorporate your left arm with your right leg and your right arm with your left leg because it just gets your brain going as well. It's nice. Good, now we're going to do some back lunges. So we're going to lunge back with one leg and then the other. Right, now this is different to when we were just hopping forward and back because I'm making it a sort of a decent length step back. Okay, so I'm getting these quadriceps and glute muscles engaged when I step back. So they're all getting warmed up nice and gently. And of course you choose how far to step back and no one's going to say to you, oh no, you must step back further, you must warm up. It's your body, you, you have to warm it up at your own, uh, your own speed, your own pace. Yeah, that's nice. I know we'll do some side lunges. So I'm gonna push to the side, and push back, and push to the other side, and push back. And even, uh, we hope very much that you do come down to do the classes. Um, but even if you don't, even if you think, oh, I'm not brave enough for it, I really can't get there on that day at that time, just going through this little warm up would be an awful lot better than doing nothing. And so it's, it's not a bad thing to do if you just went through the warm up. All right, so I want you to gently press your palms together. Right, so Pressing your palms together activates all the muscles in your shoulders and, and your arms, but gently, all right? So you're not going crazy, you're not trying to crush walnuts or anything. Uh, so just a gentle pressure on your palms. And then we'll gently lock our fingers and pull apart. And so obviously the muscles that didn't get used when we were pushing are now used as we're pulling. Yeah, right, so let's do the same again and push. Pull me and then we'll pull. That's it, good. All right, now let's circle one arm forward. Now, um, I've been doing martial arts since uh, 1978. So, my I'm getting on a bit, I'm 62 at the moment, so 61, 61 at the moment, yeah 61 at the moment, so um, my range of movement is okay, so I've been doing this a long while, 
Um, but be patient. If your range of movement isn't quite as good, you think yours may be better. But I'm just saying, it mine should be good because I've been doing this for a, a lot of my life. So, yeah, get the other side. And although I'm not super flexible, I think I'm reasonably flexible for somebody my size and, and, and age. Good. All right, let's, uh, let's try a bit of coordination. We'll go forward with one, circle one arm forward and the other one backwards. Lots of it will find this one difficult, but uh, don't worry. Good, I'll change direction. Good. All right, I'll just go across my chest this way. Say hi to Sensei Maisie, hi Maisie. She's just going to get a lunch. Good, all right, now we're going to do a little bit of um, leg swinging. We do this really gently. Um, again, because I've got no idea, if you're watching this video at home, I've got no idea what your previous is, what your experience is so far, what you've done. I don't know how active you've been. You may, your fitness and flexibility may completely overshadow mine. And I'm fine with that, I'm great, I'm really pleased for you. Um, but if, if not, then just do this gradually and carefully. Right, I'm going to place one leg in front of the other. I'm going to swing my knee up this way. And my goal is to bring my knee up towards my shoulder. But I'm not going to go crazy on this. I'm going to do it really carefully. I'll do 10. I'll say I'll do 10. But as I haven't counted from the start, it's going to be a bit of a guesstimate. So let's say that's 6, 7, 8. Nine and ten. Right, let's do the other side. One, two, and this is stretching my glutes and my hamstrings a little bit. Not much on the hamstrings because I'm bending my knee. So, but it's still a little bit, a little bit of a, a stretch, a little bit of an extension on my hamstrings. Um, lost count again. Still that seven, eight. Nine, ten, good. Right now we'll do an exercise we call opening the gate. So just lifting up and gently sweeping your knee outwards. Gently sweeping your knee outwards. Right, and again, this is just loosening your, addu loosening your adductors up, the muscles up the inside of your leg. Good, I've got no idea how many I've done, so I'll just do what feels about right. And, and you can probably hear that I'm just, I'm not desperately breathless, but my, uh, my breathing has changed. So it is, um, it has, is having some effect, my blood's pumping. You know, my respiration rate is going up a little bit, which is good, which is nice. It's a, it's a warm up, a proper warm up. All right, so let's go with that turn one leg straight again. Then we're going to swing the other leg, but keep it straight this time. I want you to be really careful with this. I want you to make sure that you don't tear a hamstring or, or, or damage any muscle or joint at all. I want you to swing it gently. And when you feel resistance, when you feel, oops, that's far enough, that just that drop back. Right, don't strap, don't strain or stretch or stress anything. Just gently swing and then drop back. Gently swing and back. I'm going to do this ten times. I think that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. We do the other side. Ready? Gently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. All right, lovely. Now I'm going to get you to do one more leg swing exercise. Um, and again, I want you to do this really carefully, very similar to the last one. Um, it's, but instead of swinging straight up and straight back, I'm going to come across my body and swing outwards. Right, and again, that's going to uh, loosen off those adductors on the, the muscles on the inside of my legs. Um, you may have spotted lots of attention on hamstrings, muscles at the back here, and adductors, muscles on the inside here. Um, and, I, and I think I put a lot of emphasis on loosening those muscles because I know how uncomfortable it is if I pull, tear, or strain those muscles. You know, it just makes walking and everything uncomfortable um, and sitting sometimes. So I'm really careful to warm those muscles up. That's what I want for you. I want you to be careful and, and have those muscles warmed up nicely. All right, so we'll pop one leg in front and just swing up and that. Yeah, now don't go too crazy on the outward swing. You know, we just want to gently warm up that muscle. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right, let's do the other side. Ready? One. classes uh, for you to watch as well if you'd like to and I should do a different um, warm-up and stretch out from the other class I'll do what we call a seated uh, stretch um, and that's quite good so that we can um, well it's just a bit different really and what tends to happen is you'll, you'll have a preference one over the other one will suit your body type a little bit more than the other um, and and that's just how it is you know after all this time doing martial arts I prefer one over the other. I, I must admit, I do prefer a seated stretch. I think it warms me up and, and loosens me off a little bit better. But I know lots of people who prefer the standing one that we've just done. Good, all right, now, <clears throat> I'm going to do, in this session, I'm going to do some punches with you, um, some hand techniques. And then in the next session, I'm going to do some legs. Right, so you, you'll get a bit of both. And uh, as I said, I can't promise um, that the, the content of the class will be exactly the same as the content of each of your classes. But a couple of things I can promise you, it will be this type of pace, this is the type of intensity or lack thereof that we'll be doing it at. Um, so, so you can gauge whether you think this will be okay or not. Um, and these are the types of techniques that we'll be covering. Yeah, even if they're not these exact ones in this exact order, It'll be this type of thing. Well, I hope that makes sense to you. All right, so when we go into getting into techniques, we, we sort of have a formal funnel that, that, we, that we go into. So we do the feet together, hands by your sides first. This is tension position. And then we have a Jun B position. So we put our left leg out. Our left leg comes out to shoulder width. And we place our hands like this just to show that we're ready. And, and this is just a ready position, a ready stance, yeah? Right, so set position is where we bow and where we do most things from. Well, our beginning, if you like. And then from here, Jun B. Yeah, so here. Good. And I'm going to step forward. Um, I'm going to step forward with my right leg um, so that if you're watching me, you can treat it like a mirror. Yeah, but in classes, we almost, what well, we do always start by stepping forward with our left leg. Yeah, so if you're, if you're right-sided, and sometimes I know people that, and there are a lot more right sided people than left sided people and people often have a natural instinct to step forward with their right leg right, but we do start everything with our left leg so I'll step with my right leg to mirror you and you step with your left leg yeah, so we're here, let's start again, so set position Jun B position, right, so I'm going to step forward with my, my mirror left, right, it's my right leg bring my hands up to guard like this 
And now this is what we call a fighting stance. Yeah, this is our, our general combat stance. Now, if you can see, um, looking in, on the screen, hopefully my stance is about as wide as my shoulders are. So from the outside of this foot, the outside edge of this foot, to the outside edge of this foot, is about the same as the outside of this shoulder to the outside of this shoulder. Well, and it's, it's a really simple reason. It gives me a nice stable base so that I don't topple over easily. I don't lose my balance quite as easily. Right, and going forward, come on, set in here, it's, it's between one and a half and two times my shoulder width. Right, so a little bit more from the back of this heel to the front of these toes than across, but not a huge amount more. And this, this is a position you'll be spending lots of time in, so you need to be comfortable in it. It needs to be something you can do reasonably easily. Um, you can see, hopefully, that both, both of my knees are soft. I'm not standing here with straight legs. All right, and a couple of reasons for this. Um, in terms of martial, art, martial artsness, you know, being rigid with straight legs would be really bad. I'm not flexible, I'm not mobile, I can't move easily. As soon as I bend those, I can push forward and back and I can move my torso much more easily and I'm much less likely to lose balance. Yeah, but in terms of fitness, activity and activating muscles, I can stand with my legs locked and have no muscles activated because my hips are sort of just being held in position, my knees are locked backwards and I don't need any muscular activity to keep me in that position. But as soon as I bend those knees, then all sorts of muscles have to just gently come into play to help them to work. Now there's an upside and a downside to this, of course. The upside is you will increase muscle tone. You will, you will have a, a nicer shape to your musculature. You will have a, a nicer feel to it. It will be, it'll be more solid and more, well, more toned, more as it should be. Um, and, and that's a good thing. It will use more calories. It will, it will burn energy, which is another good thing. And the dehanso is you might be a bit stiff if you haven't used those muscles much um, previously. All right, but let's press on from there. So let's go through that thing, set position, jumbi position, and then a fighting stance. Good, hand position. So hands up nicely like this, in a nice comfortable position. I say comfortable, but if you're not used to this, it probably won't feel especially comfortable. Um, but really what we need to do is, as soon as we begin martial arts training, we need to think about getting our hands up to protect our head. Our head is our most important thing. This is where all decisions are made. This is where all activity initiate, initiates. Easy for me to say. Um, if we don't protect our head, then everything else is going to stop working anyway. You know, and, and if you get into martial arts and you want to condition your body, make it stronger and whatever, Great, you can. It's very hard to condition your head. So we need to be able to protect our head. So our hands need to come up to a position where we can easily protect our head in, in any way that we, we learn to do it. Right? And it's much harder to do that if you stand with your arms dropping down this way. Right? So hands up this way. Um, we tend to just close our hands gently so that our fingers don't get uh, pinged and you don't bend them back accidentally. Right, so I wouldn't say tightly clenched fists, but just closed hands, yeah. And we'll do all of those things um, in a moment. Right, then I'm going to get into a front hand punch this way. Right, so it's the hand that's in front that's just going to come out straight. Now I'm going to come a little bit closer to the camera, just to show you how to make a fist. Right, so from here we close our fingers this way, and we put a thumb on top there. Yeah, so I'll show you with the other hand. From there, close your fingers this way, and put your thumb there. Don't put your thumb on the end because it'll get caught, get caught in clothes and get pinged. Right, don't put your thumb inside because it'll get hurt if you actually hit anything, it'll really damage this joint. Right, so it just goes there. Okay with that? Good. Now I would advise you don't clench your fist too tightly to start with because you know, your hands will get cramped up and they, they get sore. Right, just close them and keep them in a nice comfortable position. Try to create good habits. Alright, so this is where we are. So we're going to do front hand punch. We extend this front arm out, palm downwards, and come back this way. Right, so from here, extend out, drop your elbow back down. Now I often say to people, imagine that I've got a bungee cord that's attached to this thumb, 
goes around the back of my head, is attached to the crown of my head here, and comes around the other side and is attached to this thumb. And they sort, of, they sort of bounce like this on the bungee cord, yeah? And then as I extend out and then relax it, go boing, and just bounce back into position. So one, boing. Yeah, so rather than this, obviously I had a bungee cord, it wouldn't, it would come back to here. Yeah, does that make sense? I have all sorts of analogies in my teaching, so we'll see. All right, so we're going to just extend out of that each count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Good, right, switch legs, so just change legs. Just check that position, make sure my feet are uh, nicely, the width of my shoulders here, knees bent, knees soft, and about twice that uh, shoulder width length this way. Hands up, ready? One, two, three, four, Hopefully you can see I'm keeping this back hand up when I'm punching with this hand. This hand doesn't fly out anywhere. It just relaxes and stays in here. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. All right. And then come back to come on. Relax for a second. All right, so that's a front hand punch, and sometimes we, we call it snap punch because it's a snappy technique. It's nice and sharp and snappy. Right, but it's a front hand punch, really. All right, so uh, that's the first technique that you do. Prob probably, I mean, as I said, Master Wood can choose how he teaches these um, and in what order. Um, but just giving you some idea. And most importantly, I hope you're getting an idea of the tempo, the speed, the, the intensity. Yeah, this, this is the sort of thing that you'll be looking at. I think it's really important that you get these things. Good. All right, so I'm going to do the set and jimbi thing as a mirror this time. So if you mirror me, rather than um, think about what I'm actually doing, it probably works better. All right, so set position and jimbi. Good. All right, I'll put my left leg forward or my, my mirrored left leg. Yeah, good. All right, now this time I'm going to reverse punch or backhand punch. So I start from this same position here, hands up. I'm going to punch with the hand that's on, my, on the back side. So my, this leg is forward, but I'm not going to punch with this hand, I'm going to punch with this hand. All right, so I get more of a twist and pull back this way. And right, now this, when, once you get these punches, um, get them down and you're good at them, you'll find that reverse punch is much more, has much more strength and power than a front hand punch because you can drive with your back leg, you can twist in, you get the twist of your body, you get the movement of your arm. Right, so it's a much more powerful technique. But let's not worry about that too much at the moment. Let's just get the technique itself. Right, so we're gonna twist in this way, extend down, and come back. And hopefully you can see that as I punch, I end up with my palm downwards. Right, and punching with your palm down is a much more efficient way to punch than any other finished position. Right, so finishing like this is less efficient. Finishing like this definitely less efficient. All right, so make sure you turn it downwards this way. And this hand stays up to guard. All right, so let's say I've done three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, let's switch legs. Um, I'm gonna turn and face the other way. I hope it's not too confusing for you. Um, I, I know you won't be able to mirror me exactly, but um, hopefully you can see a little bit more detail. But as I punch, I do this with my stance. So this. So I don't know if you notice, but pretty much all of my body weight, all of my enormous mass, just moves in behind that punch. All right, so I'm actually getting some some of what I weigh into the technique. 
So I'll do 10 facing this way. Perhaps you can see a little bit better then. So start in this position and bend this leg. Good. And just let my weight move in behind the technique. Um, now we all know, I mean, Master Wood's been teaching almost as long as I have. And we all know that there are lots of things for people to think about when they first start doing techniques. If you get everything correct, if you do everything that we've mentioned correctly on the first lesson, we'll be a standard, right? Because it's a lot to think about. Lots and lots of things to think about. And you don't have to, you know, it's a, it's a course. It's several weeks. You don't have to get everything right the first time. Good, all right, so let's reverse punch for you. <coughs> So um, just, just to go over that again, when, when I finish those punches, the instruction would be, come on. So you come back to here and then relax. Yeah, all right. But you'll get that, don't worry. It'll all come to you eventually with practice. Um, and as I said, I've said many times during this session, the idea of this video is to help you to feel more comfortable, like you know something when you go into the class. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it there for this session. Um, there is another one of these videos that's going to be uh, available and it will have a slightly different warm up, slightly different stretch, and we'll do some leg techniques. Yeah, so not a huge difference, but just a little bit of variety so that you know, you know what to expect and you can get maximum enjoyment from doing the classes when you, when you turn up and arrive here. All right, good, so let's finish the class off. Feet together, hands by our sides, and just bow. Good stuff. All right, well, I'll see you on the next video.